Hey there, golfers, and welcome to a very special episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Today, we are at the PJ Coaching Center here at PJ Frisco. We have a very, very special guest with us. It is Mark Brooks, the 1996 PGA champion. Uh, we've also got the Wanamaker Trophy here with us uh, because we're going to talk a lot about the PGA Championship today. Uh, so, Mark, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, well, you're welcome. You got, always, always fun to be with you. I got your uh, you got your Augusta Green on today and for Masters Week. I yeah. do. I was there for a couple of days. Yeah, uh, it's it's fa- it's awesome to have you here. Um, we wanted to kind of spend some time with you talking about PGA Championship, especially this year because the course host this year is Valhalla, where you won in '96. So, um, first of all, I mean, how are things like? Does it Every year at PGA Championship time, do you kind of feel, you know, is it like a special week for you? Obviously, you're, you well, go every year. I feel a year older. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a fact. So, it's been whatever you do the math, twenty eight years or some wild number. Yeah. Mm, kind of, well, I've been fortunate enough to be able to work some some type of television work. Okay. Uh, at, yeah. With the PGA, probably the last I don't know twelve years or so. So it's been I've, I've been able to go back. Mm-hmm. And I, I've done U.S. Opens and the PGA, uh, so it's been fun. Mostly feature group work, uh, so y'all can tune in, and uh, I'll have one of the good groups. It'll be fun to be back there again. Uh, I went back in 2014 when Rory won. I was there that week as well, so uh, it's fun to go back. But it's been a long time. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a special. Obviously, it was a special year in my life as far as golf. That was definitely my best year. Yeah, uh, as far as you know, getting wins, and. You know, it was probably pretty much downhill from there. So. <laughs> well, that's a tough way to put it. But. No, but I mean, I'd reached the, you know, that was about as higher than I ever thought I could probably go as well. Yeah. And, uh, but I'd had a good year going, going into the PGA. I'm probably jumping the gun on your questions, but uh, I, one of the reasons I, I did well there is I, I'd already had a good year. Yeah. And I'd already won twice early in the year, spaced out pretty, pretty evenly. I'd already played decent in a couple of majors. So I wasn't shocked when I had a chance or when I was in contention. It wasn't like a big surprise. And I didn't feel like I'd just, uh, you know, the proverbial smoke and mirrors to get in position. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've watched back a few times, not as many as people probably think. I've yeah. probably watched it back four or five times. And it was a very close event. There were probably five or six guys that had a really good shot. I'm talking about the last couple of holes. Mm-hmm. So when you see it in that, in that regard, in that vein, you know, you realize, yeah, you you played as well as anybody else, and you're pretty lucky to come out on top at the end. Yeah, it's uh, I I've watched back the highlight tape, and there is a ton of names that were flowing up and down during the week and on Sunday. Um, I remember Phil Mickelson was I think in the lead after 36 holes maybe, um, and then you know Kenny Perry of course was in there. You had a bunch of names uh, that up and down throughout DJ the whole day. Singh was right yep. there. Kenny mm-hmm. Perry obviously was in the playoff. Uh, Russ Cochran was, I want to say, yeah. the leader going to the last day. Yeah. So there were, and he was a local. He was a Kentucky yeah, boy. Yeah, he so kind of kind of got the crowd favorite there. He, he and Kenny Perry both were Kentucky yeah. guys. So, you know, they, they did home crowd proud. Were they kind of, were they against you almost? Or was it like, I mean. I, I, I could, I could hear, hear nothing. <laughs> I could hear nothing. Yeah. So, Tunnel vision. Because, so, yeah, are you, so coming down the stretch in a major and you got a chance. And I know this wasn't the only time you were in contention to win a major. But is there a certain focus level where you kind of, you're tuning everything out. You're not even worried about leaderboards. It's just kind of shot by shot by shot. I, I was always aware of leaderboards uh, you know, because you might run into, let's call it a situation where you might have to take more risk. Yeah. Uh, so I was always aware of a leaderboard. I wasn't, let's, let's call it obsessed. But, you know, uh, some tournaments you kind of know where you're closer or not, you know, it depends on where the leaderboards yeah. are. You're not obsessed. Again, you're not obsessed over it. And it's not really affecting too many of your, shot decisions, but, um, you know, Valhalla finishing with the 18th hole, the par five, you know, you basically drove it out there. You wanted to see what kind of yardage you had left. And even though I wanted to knock it on the green in two, I hit it where I was trying to hit it. It was, a, you know, put it in the front bunker and let's try to get it up and down. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, sticking to the plan. I mean, I wish the plan, you know, if, if your plans win as, plan, as planned yeah. more often, we'd have a lot more trophies in the house. Yeah, as well. okay? so, yeah, but this uh, is a pretty good plan, though. You know, <laughs> it worked out. Again, it worked out, and again, it wasn't wasn't shocked I was there, and you just kept plodding along. And, and you mentioned earlier we we're just casually talking. You know, sometimes you things happen during a week where it might be a special week, and I hold actually hold a a six or seven iron on I want to say about the fourteenth or fifteenth, maybe fifteenth hole, mm-hmm. 
on the Saturday round. And that's, you know, that's kind of when you know, mm, maybe this might. That, that might, was kind of the yeah, moment for you where week. you kind of think, okay, this could be my week to. And it to was a good major. shot. But, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm sure it, what it, obviously, it's a shot or two better than you were probably going to shoot. So who knows? That shot might have got me in the last group. Yeah. Uh, and that happened on Saturday. Right. Uh, and then Valhalla, the golf course now, or the, the well, course I, itself. I, I got, we run off. We're slow here because we got all the time you need. Well, yeah. You said about focus. Yeah. Uh, I was pretty good at, let's call it tunnel vision. Um, you know, you, I use the term, you know, getting yourself in a, putting yourself in a bubble. I was pretty good at that. And um, probably goes back to, you know, coaching from, you know, back all the way to, you know, let's call it junior high or before. And... I had I was a, did a decent job a lot of times about being able to just focus on what I needed to do and play my game, uh, fit my shots on, on what was required, and not get caught up in all the hoopla or watching other players, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, you know, you see a guy, you know, 210 yard par three back right pin and he hit this big high float and cut in there to you know eight feet. You're like, man, I'd like to I'd like to right. do that. And I was pretty good about not even trying it because it, it wasn't my shot. Yeah, that's well, the kind I was of the discipline at, you probably need. I was in good those at scenarios. you know your caddy was always the one that uh, if you had a good relationship, usually you did because or he wouldn't be on the bag. Right, and uh, that was pretty much the only person that was allowed in, inside your bubble. Mm -hmm. No officials, no fans, no family. I've walked past family members like literally two feet from them, and I didn't even know they were out watching. Wow. So that gives you some idea. And I'm, and that's probably I mean you speak on on that. You have a ton of experience with it, but I imagine other major champions or, or players that have had a, you know success in these big events have a similar kind of tunnel vision skill level where they they can just get really locked in and focused for sure you know taking distractions put them in a box put them put them you know put them somewhere way back in there yeah. and you know we all fight our demons uh, you got to be you got you have to become an expert at uh, fighting off your demons yeah. you know talk to them because they're talking to you <laughs> and you're going to hear it no matter lot, whether you like it or not and figure out how to have a conversation yeah. and uh, compromise with those demons yeah, in compromise. a proper way. Give, yeah. them, give them a little something, give them a little tease. and but. Sure. <laughs> I know you're there. I'm not going to do that. So, right. But. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about the, the golf course itself at Valhalla. Sure. Um, and so, you know, it's they've hosted PGA since you won. Um, they've hosted big events since then, Ryder Cup. Um, what is it about that course that makes it kind of a really cool, you know, major championship venue. Well, I'm going to start with the city. So you go we, Louisville. Yeah. Do not has ne never to my not in my lifetime had a regular PGA tour event. So the people that support it, they're excited that we're there. It's a big deal. It's a big show. I know they have the Kentucky Derby and they got mm -hmm. some great basketball. They've all played good football lately. Yeah. It, however, this is it's a pretty big event, worldwide coverage and only going there, whatever, 10 or 15 years, the, the local community gets more involved. And we have that happen at several places, yeah, particularly where we play majors. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the crowd. Now, second would be, it's a Jack Nicholas design golf course. So arguably, you know, you can go sit, we can sit there and go for over 30 minutes over, you know, who's the greatest t Tiger or Jack. Well, Let's call it a tie, but let's, yeah. from a golf course architecture standpoint, Jack's got him right now. Yeah, you know, Jack's got hundreds of golf courses, mm -hmm. and just the fact that it's a Nicholas course, uh, I think makes a big made a bit made a big difference as well. Yeah, for sure. And is there, I guess, when you won that week, and were you know, you said you're playing well throughout the year, and that was a big part of why you had success. Is there a particular part of the game that you think is either you know really emphasized at Valhalla, or maybe you did really well when you won that week? You know, tee shots. Mm, I mean, game. I'm going to go back to the Nicholas thing. I loved playing Muirfield Village. I thought it was, you know, I think it's still to this day one of the best tests of golf in mm -hmm. America. And, you know, pretty reasonably generous off the tees, or at least, you know, the appearance of generosity off the tee. You have to hit some really, really precise yeah. drives at Valhalla. But, you know, he was pretty fair off the tees. And then he, the, the precision, as you got closer to the green, you had to hit better and better iron shots. And so I think the, They've been able to keep that there. And so if you loved Mirfield, even though they're quite a ways apart, there's still a Nicholas style and, you know, sections of greens that you have to try to put the ball in. So I think, you know, really, really precise iron play is always a hallmark of a great Nicholas course. And so I, I had had some success at Mirfield, not never won or anything, yeah. but had, had loved it and it played well there. So uh, 
I would say that would be a really good tie. Going there, you're like, hey, I love Mirrorfield. Let's go see. Okay. And are there similarities? Obviously, there are. Green complexes in general. And so that part, uh, as far as jump forward to this year, I know they've regrassed the golf course. So they're going to be, it's going to be probably really pristine here in May. You know, I know it stayed a little chilly for them, but I, you know it'll be perfect when we get there uh, to watch this time. Yeah. But uh, what have they done? The, they made really only one or two major changes from the original 96, well, let's say by, by the 08 Ryder Cup. Yeah. And uh, for, in 2014, they did a big change on like the sixth hole. It was a pretty short, kind of almost a layup and then a short iron in, and that mm -hmm. hole's not quite as much a layup off the tee and then a, maybe a 60 yard longer second shot. Uh, so they've strengthened that part of the front nine. Uh, and overall, I think we looked at over probably it's probably 400 yards longer than it was yeah. in '96. Yeah, we've been trying to talk about that total distance, and obviously, just the nature of the game is how it progressed and, and the when ball, you're the dealing, ball's going farther. When you're dealing with existing golf course, they have to go try to find the yardage where they can and yeah. where it actually makes sense. And as we yeah. know, it's, it's you can't all, just slap more yardage on. No, there, not right? not not exactly, and because it, it's got to fit the landing zones. They, I'm sure they've shifted some bunkers around and things. Yeah. But uh, it'll be longer. The long holes have to get longer. I mean, yeah. that's kind of what's kind of crazy. You can leave a short hole alone, like the, I'm going to say it's the 13th hole there, which is basically an island green. That hole doesn't need to be any longer. It was long enough. They're not going to try to drive the green. So what, let's say the hole is 360. Uh, with some kind of long iron or nowadays maybe a little hybrid. They hit four irons and, a, and some kind of wedge in. They can leave that hole alone. Yeah. The problem is the 440s. Mm -hmm. The 435 to 455. Those become 470s now. Right, or, excuse me, 500. <laughs> they need to become 500 yeah. yards. And mm -hmm. uh, so you have a similar, try to have a similar, you know, let's say club into yeah. the green. Right. And I'm sure they've done that. Yeah, and I think so, because it's funny because you talk so much about this course and it, how much you refer to Muirfield. Is there like, so right away going into the week before even maybe even seeing the course yet, you knew you, you were. You ever played a Donald Ross? I mean, I know they all are unique, but there's certain characteristics. Yeah or a Perry Maxwell, or a Alistair McKenzie. There's always very similar things. Uh, some of the great architects used what you'd call a template. They had about 25 greens or something they worked with, and they, they were tweaked, but they used that concept to build you know, a lot of their golf courses. I know Jack had, in his mind anyway, if not on paper, some great template greens. Yeah. So you might switch the, you know, you might, in fact, invert it, like use a mirror effect, but it's the same type of, of shot. So he definitely, great architects, that's what they do. They, the shot values, yeah. you know, or, and, you know, fitting it on the land the best you can, all, all are a factor. And, yeah, there's characteristics, no question, of a Nicholas course. Yeah, and then that just inherently gave you a ton of confidence going in, knowing it was I won about a design. ton, but uh, I had had some success on, surprisingly, on yeah. Nicholas course because his reputation, you know, erroneously, and for the most part was, well, every hole, you know, you had to hit this big old high cut in there. Not the case. Uh, it's not, you weren't necessarily a high cut player. I was not a high cut player, but <laughs> I played a lot of Jack Nichols courses very well. He was a very strategic guy. Yeah. So when I give you a 60, 50 yard wide fairway, guess what? There's one half that will be a way better angle into the green. And I may not have to hit as high a beautiful cut right. in there. I got a better angle to play in. So yeah. a lot more strategy involved and, uh, I think it's a wonderful way to way yeah. to do a golf course. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, it, it's working out for for them and for Jack and the way he no designs doubt. those courses. And there's a ton out there that are just magnificent. So, um, all right, let's go back into Sunday at in '96. So we talked about the hole on 15 and how you thought maybe this was sort of a this on is your Saturday. Weekend. Yeah, that was Saturday. Yeah, yeah. on Saturday. Sunday, then you entered the day as a co-leader, I believe, or you were up towards the top. I think I was a shot back. I don't even, and to be honest, I don't remember. I kind of ebbed and flowed throughout the day. Um, what is it like, you know, you know, kind of approaching the back nine and you're really in the mix? Was there nerves or is it, I know you, we talked about how locked in you are. Is there any nerves at all? You're not thinking ahead as, I mean, is it tough to, to make sure you're staying locked well, in Well, that's there? the guy that rides on this shoulder, the yeah, thinking yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flick him off there. Yeah, well, you keep, you have a conversation. You need to go away. Uh, you can you can resurface when we get in the locker room. We're done. And uh, it's seriously, it's uh, no. I, are there nerves? Sure. If there's no nerves, then you're you know you better check your pulse. Right. Everyone's everyone's hyped up, but if it's if it's handled properly, and sometimes you do it better than others. If you're swinging, if you're confident, you know. Let's just say that with your mechanics, your yeah. mechanics are good. That's why I mentioned the smoke and mirrors earlier. 
you know, you just made a ton of putts. You chipped in twice, you made four 40 footers. You really are not that comfortable with your ball striking. If your ball striking is, let's just say, very reliable, usually guys are way more calm going out there or the struggle with putter. Yeah. Right. That's a that's probably killed more guys than anything else. Yeah. Little Coming shaky. Stretch, yeah. It's always, you know, it's in the back of their head that, you know, mm, I'm a shaky putter under the gun, whatever that means. Uh, that's usually what services first. Right. Uh, and as we all know, what happens first, they start leaving them short. You know, that's when you want to get scared. Wanted, the guy says he's not nervous and he starts leaving them short to the back nine. And he's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that putter started feeling really, yep. so, really, really light. Yeah. And he didn't know what's happening, but he was having a physical manifestation of his anxiety and mm. worry. Oh, and, we've seen it all. The, I mean, you watch a major and you probably see it once every year in every event. You see somebody kind of succumb to that. And, you know, a lot of times they overcome it. But, but that's why you winning. preach process, routines, yeah. and all that so that you can figure out how to get in your own bubble. Mm -hmm. And I was, again, at different times, you do, it, you do it way better certain times than other times, depending on what's going on in your life. But, uh, you know, being able to keep things in perspective, I think we'll, we'll use current day player Scotty Scheffler. Clearly, you know, he's got, he, the stats are proven he's hitting the ball right. better than anybody else as far as ball control. He's plenty long. Putting, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tired of him talking about the putting. Obviously, he's missing some putts that he probably shouldn't be. But uh, he, ha most importantly, has golf in the right place in his life. Yeah. And that's a huge deal. And it's not as life or death for him. Um, he realizes if he wins, he might, well, knock on wood, if he could win the Grand Slam, would that change his life in a different way? Maybe. But as far as changing Scotty Scheffler, that wouldn't change Scotty Scheffler. Right. It would a lot of guys. Yeah, you know, I suppose. Would, mm -hmm. the, the narcissistic egomaniac would probably come out in most people. Yeah. And most people, if you were advising them, you go, if you win the Grand Slam, you know what you need to do, like immediately. That would be called retire. Okay, <laughs> you're done. You need to be done. Be done. Uh, but, you know, Scotty's, that, that's his greatest attribute right now, in my opinion. He's got, he's got life, golf, and everything else in perspective. And yeah. so it lets him deal with the anxiety, the, uh, let's just call it uh, adversity. Yeah. It's always going to come. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're, they're, they're in Augusta this week. Every player in the field is going to deal with some kind of bad break yeah. or perceived bad break. They're going to hit a shot. It's going to catch something spin off, go down the hill, end up in the lake, double. And not only did they not feel like they deserved it, they probably didn't deserve it. Yeah. But that's part of the game. So uh, the guys that handle that the best usually end up in the long run being the winners. Yeah. But that's, and that, and I just love using him as an example because he, he's, a, he's a very humble warrior right now. Yeah, and there's a certain calmness he has in those no. high-pressure situations. No that's doubt. why he wins so much. Sorry. Um, and that's why he continues to dominate the, he doesn't win as the, much as you think. I mean, he's won a lot for t current world, you know, let's just say for golf today. He hasn't won like 12 times in the last year. Like, yeah, but that he was, went on, but he that's went a, on a dry stre stretch there. Then he just, yeah, then he went but back to back weeks. And because he's, he, when you watch him play, he's so under control with everything, including his emotions, 99% of the time. You perceive that he's winning every yeah, week. I suppose it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I suppose that's that's a fair point. And because down the stretch of those tournaments, you know, like the leaderboard's changing, um, you might be in a different situation. Just walking from the tee to your to your approach ball, right? You might be in a different situation just in those three minutes that you walked to your ball than you were off the tee. That's why you don't decide till you get there. <laughs> that's a good point. That's why you don't even think about that shot. You, you don't like you miss a green. You don't already decide which which pitch, yeah. what kind of. What am I going to do from there? Right. I mean, unless it's like everything's mowed exactly identical, which it's not usually. Uh, you wait till you get there. Yeah. Make, yeah. And that wait, make situation changes. Make, make exactly right. Your law is going to dictate the yeah. whole deal. Because like I, I was looking through and watching the highlight of, of 96. And at one point, Kenny Perry was up two on you. And then or right, you got the no, 12 under. No. He got the okay. 12 under. All right. And then he bogeyed 18. And so you were still behind him at that point. You were uh, a couple holes behind, maybe. When you saw, like, did you see that he was up there ahead of you, um, a couple shots or whatever? Uh, and did honestly you honestly don't remember? So you basically just knew once you got to 18 that you were down a shot and needed birdie. That I did know for sure. Okay. And I'm sure I knew at about 16. Let's just say for sure. Okay. And I don't remember what I made on the holes. So, so basically, you knew at those last couple holes, like, all right, I need need to get one more birdie. No doubt, I knew I knew I needed four at 18. Okay. And if if I 
was it super aware? I would ask my caddy who would have asked somebody. Well, you know, the, the we spotters. Yeah. You know, the guys carrying the mics go, I want to know. You want to know? I'll find out. We'll know. Mm. And then they would ask, Are you sure? Yeah. And they go, Yeah, we're positive. You're and, you're, you're one back. So that's it's funny. That that's, it's funny that that's how it was back then. I mean, today now you could look at a, lead, a digital but, leaderboard or something and well, see we it, couldn't. But, I mean, there might not be a leaderboard out in the 18th fairway for sure. I'm yeah. just saying that, that situation still occurs today. And I'm sure, guys, they can check. There's nothing, finding out a score is not like, you know, like against the rules. No, no. So, you know, it's not like, right. well, what do you hit here? You know, yeah, right. That's a completely different story. But no, guys ask all the time. Yeah. Now, they may wait till the end, you know, um, you know, keep the blinders on. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah. I don't want to know. I'm like, man, maybe there's, a, there's some situations you should know. Yeah. No question about it. <laughs> so... 18, truly, your plan was to hit it basically in that greenside bunker? No, no question. Yeah, because whatever, I think I had, had a, my four wood or whatever railer in there. And I'm pretty positive there's no way I could have carried that front bunker, the entire bunker. And actually, in the playoff, I had knocked it on it and knocked it on it too, but down on the lower level. I was kind of doing the same thing and just missed, missed the bunker. And you I got on the green. Well, you could almost argue the putt was harder to get up and down than, than, really? than the front bunker. That green had two. Let's yeah, it's call kind it. of a. It's kind of like almost, you know, crowned in the middle sort well, of. Well, it's a, it's a plateau. Yeah, plateau. And then it has two wings off the side, and the one on the right's a pretty severe slope. And I actually, I, I, I now that recalling, I had I had to play a fairly safe putt in the playoff, so that I didn't like run at the fringe or something yeah. and end up you know having a problem. And you know it was like I needed a for sure three putt. You know, in other words, I knew five was probably was right. going to win by that point. But I'm just saying. It was an easier bunker up and down, generally speaking, than trying to two putt mm. from the wrong wrong level. That's how good a bunker player these guys are. Is they're gonna go, they're gonna hit the ball on purpose in the That's greenside right. bunker, and then instead those, of trying to, you know, those are Nicholas two-putt. bunkers. Yeah. They're, yeah, he, that's true. That's he, the confidence he, level that he, he has. He has very fair fairway <laughs> greenside bunkers. <laughs> yeah, see? Exactly. And you might see that strategy again this year. In fact, year. He, got, he, got, he got angry at times because we did get up and down too many times. Let's say we, tour players. Their percentage got too high. He's like, there's no way you should be, the, they should be 50 or 60%. Do you think we'll see that again this year? Like players purposely hitting it into the, like, on 18, you know? I mean, they have the distance probably to hit it on the green, but like maybe missing or sort of playing as if that bunker is going for to be totally sure, for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, unless the sand's this deep and it'll bury, which, but they're going to go in there with, let's say, hybrid to five irons. Yeah. And uh, if they're hitting a five iron in there, they're not trying to hit it in the bunker. Right. Okay, let's just put, let's go that. Correct. They're, they're going to try to fly it on, on the right level, right tier. So, but yes, there are cases that's the miss, you know, so yeah. you're, you're kind of going for it, but if it doesn't carry, fine, I'm in the front bunker. Right. That's very, very, very common. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, one other accomplishment in your, well, kind of the totality of your career that I wanted to ask you about was 803 starts That's on the lot. PGA Tour. It's a lot, 803. Uh, where, like, on the list of accomplishments in your career, just having that number, 803, that is where does not that at the top of my okay. <laughs> accomplishments. Uh, it was something that accumulated. I mean, it, it tells you, you know, you somehow, they don't give you starts. Okay. You no, they, you absolutely yeah, not. It's not a lottery, so you don't get to just send in tickets and you get in. So it, it tells you, you know, I knock on wood, stayed pretty healthy, relatively healthy, mm-hmm. uh, and played, you know, let's just say competent enough professional golf to be able to get in that many events. Yeah. I didn't get a ton of sponsor exemptions and all that to to, to, to get to that 803. Right. Is there like a number, how many, like how many years did you have a t- PJ Tour card? 20, on the regular tour, 27-ish. That's a lot of years. I mean, that's, you know, it doesn't, like you said. And you, most, you know, exempt is a funky word with the PJ Tour, but uh, relatively exempt for most, yeah. of, most of 20. Right, you know, there's kind of lifetime, you know. Past champion event, or, yeah, you know, can get champion, in, and yeah. they get in less now than they used to. But let's just say, you know, 25 years straight of that, and then a couple at the end before I was turning 50. That's a lot of years to be. I played unstable. less than 15 events one time in 27 years. I think that's part of the trick too, is just making sure you're out there and you better be exempt. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> to some degree, you better have access. If you don't have access, you're not playing. It's that right. simple. Yeah. You know, I Monday qualified uh, when I turned pro out of college. I made two or three of the Monday qualifiers before I ever went to first Q school. Okay. After that, I never went to another Monday qualifier. I may, if I did, maybe one or two, uh, but yeah. that was it. Before, so after that, you this had, was you not. Had your I wasn't a Monday ra- rabbit qualifier. Right. Because after the, that one, you had your status and you were... Some kind of status yeah. that got, got me in. Uh, the, the number, the 803, uh, 
which doesn't ring a bell much with the kid. You know, I'm out there, you know, doing TV or caddying yeah. occasionally or something. And like, they'll hear, somebody else say, say something. And so this kid been out two years and he, usually it, it'll hit him eventually and he'll come over and go, now, wait a minute, you, you've played 803. I go, done the math for you. I said, you guys, none of y'all play more than 25 events a year. Yeah. He goes, well, that's pretty fair. Unless you're chasing your card at the very end, you know, you have to. But that would only take you 32 years. If you played 25 events a year, that's 32 years and you're still short. You gotta go play four more. So that's how the math works. That gives that's a you a lot of golf. 32 years? That's a lot of golf. Well, we get your card at 20. A lot 20. of good golf. Get your card at 22. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> that's a lot of time. Yeah. You'll so, be 54 years that old. That is the record. That is the record, right? At 54, you won't be, you still hadn't caught me. Yeah. That is the record, right? It is the record. And it, I, I can't imagine that's gonna change. Davis Love III has a shot, but you know, I'm gonna give him a lot of grief because he's, man, he's, He's 60 now or, plus, yeah. or 60 plus. And I reached mine 800, well, you know, quite a while ago. Let's, yeah. just put, let's put it this way. I was way early, like maybe 50 yeah. or, or, or younger. So it doesn't wow. count if you play too much at the end. Yeah, that is, that's fascinating. 803 career starts. That, that's one of those records I, I can't imagine. It's Well, they're not going to need to either. Right. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, let's, unless there's some catastrophic thing that happens, guys are not going to need to play near that many events to let's just say be financially satisfied. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's, yeah that's fair with the way things have changed here. But um, yeah, that's, I had to ask that because uh, I know, I mean, it's, I, I, I know our team at Second Swing, the leadership, and they obsess over that stat. Um, and it's just, you know, and then 803, of course. Um, it's really cool. It's, it's really like cool the Cal Ripken that. thing of golf. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of. That's kind a great. Of, that's a great of. comparison there. Yeah. So, Mark, I wanted to ask a little bit too about this year's event, 2024 PJ Championship, back at Valhalla. We talked already a ton about Valhalla, but well, we did because you got Tiger, Rory, yeah, and somebody else. So there's going to be a fourth, yeah, a fourth winner there that's going to have Valhalla. It's yeah. going to have their name on the trophy. That's so. the that's the joke that, that you told me. It's a joke, but it's the joke it, that you told me, the trivia question joke. It's pretty cool though. <laughs> I mean, it, that those guys, you know, have followed me and yeah. winning there. That's a pretty cool stat. I bet, I bet that'll be a, a little fun factoid, you know, on the t broadcast or something, is name the three players that have it'll, won a PGA it'll Championship. It'll be on Jeopardy and it'll, stu it'll stump them. <laughs> <laughs> it'll stump them. Mark Brooks, Tiger Woods, Roy McIlroy. Um, first of all, you're going to go back for the Champions Dinner. I will go this year. Um, I went last year. Oh, I've gone the last couple of years. It's been really good. What's, what's that like, kind of reconvening with past PJ Champions? Well, to, to these guys' credit, uh, it had gotten, it'd become a little too corporate-y for after a while, you know, dinner was a couple hundred people. Yeah. Um, and they weren't money making. It was just, it it really, it had morphed into not a past champions dinner. And yeah. so w they brought it back. I'm gonna, you know, the the virus probably, you know, kind of oh, yeah. skipping everything one sure. year. And it's like, well, we're we gonna even redo this thing, do this thing. And but anyway, they, they got it back down to where it's pretty much, I don't know how many were there last year, 20, 25 guys, 24 guys maybe showed up. And there's some of the executives, the pre president, uh, yeah. Seth Wall will be there, mm -hmm. uh, and the tournament chairman, uh, whoever's running the event. But it's a small group. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just one long table, which is really cool. And so that, that deal's fun. And you get to hear the guys talk a little bit. Um, there's always somebody gets to, I won't say speak, but, you know, I did it a couple years ago. I actually got everyone to speak. Yeah. So I asked a couple cool questions, and we mm -hmm. went around the room. So... Uh, anyway, it's it's become a fun dinner again, and I'll do yeah. it because, mainly because I'm going to be there anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be. I'm sure it's going to be fun to kind of reminisce. You know, even you mentioned being there Rory. And, Rory's going to obviously be a top two. You know, things probably won't change in a month. Yeah, it'll be Scotty or Rory being the favorite. Right. Um, yeah. Both have a good shot, but the golf course fits a lot of people there. Yeah. So you don't have to be a bomber to play well there. It. I was this distance thing. We're all kind of sick of it almost as tired of the distance thing as we are the other thing, the, mm -hmm. the old elephant in the room. But, uh, yeah. you know, people said it right. If you controlled your ball, distance has always been an advantage. You know, if you hit it long, 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 oh, and, yeah. and, and had it under control, you had an advantage. And that's still true to this day. But it was true a long, it was true 300 years ago mm -hmm. and 100 years ago. So it's a cool guy, you know, I think it's gonna be another good event. It's interesting that it's in May. I kind of wish it was back in August at the end, personally. But, That's right. Uh, it was different with when you yeah, played. Yeah, it was definitely different. You yeah. know, the last, whatever it was, Glory's last shot was their tagline. 
Right. Um, so now it's like Glory's second shot. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But they all fit it in there. To, you know, to get the playoffs in, Olympics jumped in. There was a lot of reasons they moved. That being said, the guys that are favored this week, which we're, we're obviously Augusta, yeah. we're a Masters Masters week, it'll be the same suspects. Yeah. It mm-hmm. won't change. There might be one or two guys that do something between now and you know, going to Louisville, that'll jump up. But uh, for the most part, it's going to be the same, mm-hmm. same characters. Yeah, another one and I want thank to... goodness it's the same characters. So the guys from over there are going to, most of them are going to get to play. Yeah. At Valhalla, which I think is huge. I think it's important right now. Um, I think the fact that, what do we have? We have 13 live players that are, we. Golf has 13 live players at Augusta. Yeah. I would suspect we'll see the same, similar Should numbers there. Should be similar, there. yeah. Because... I mean, let's just face it, you know, those guys, they're clearly in the top 50 or whatever in the world. No yeah. question about it. Yeah. So we're going to have them there. It's I not think that's stated that way in the official golf world rankings. But, but that's, that's, yeah, well, we, that, that's, we know that. But the, yeah. the, there's no question. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Bryson just sort of put a stamp on that yesterday. He did. He did. You know, he, he, win or lose, I mean, yeah. jumps out and he's leading. So. I mean, another one in this conversation, Brooks Kepka. He won PGA last year. Um, still looks like he's, you know, Gonna show up to these big I mean, old man perform. Phil finished second last year at Augusta. Yeah, yeah, I know it was a little. You know, we call it backdoor, backdoor second, but it doesn't matter. Uh, still was there, but that that part, you know, th- th- what's going on in golf, I think, has put a really shined a bigger spotlight on the majors. Yeah, and I think they've taken on even more importance. Oh, totally. And that that part's cool. So you know, back to that. My name's on that. It is. It will always you know, be on that. It's, it's ro- rolling up. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not a stat guy, but uh, there's only like, I don't know, it's around 270 people that have ever won a major. Yeah. And, you know, we've been playing U.S. Opens, what, 100, 120 years old? So mm-hmm. it's that part's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, that is really cool. It's but, always but, gonna, Your name's always going to be but, on this But trophy. the favorites are going to be the same that are this yeah. week, next week. You know, it just doesn't change. British Open, you see a little quirk change there. Just kind of the style of golf's different over there. The Open Championship, to not offend our, our British our British friends. <laughs> certain go, certain links golf courses definitely tr- you know will tend to favor a certain guy you know or yeah. not guy let's say a more styled player has a better chance. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Like yeah, Brian, yeah, yeah. Brian Harmon went in last year. Yeah. I mean he you know he can play good anywhere, but he's got a lot better odds at a place like that. Yeah, that makes total sense. So. Um, well, this has been awesome. I got a, one more Thank question you. I have for you as we wrap up is kind of to summarize what the PGA Championship is to you. So what does the PGA mean to you as an event, as a competition, as something to look back on as an accomplishment maybe in your career? Just kind of try to summarize that if you can. I know it's a very loaded That's question. That's a very loaded question. Yeah. Uh, Major championships have a certain amount of, I'm going to call it permanence yeah. to them. It's the history, legacy, tradition, all the, all the stupid buzzwords. But there's a permanence to winning a major. Uh, case in point, I mean, whatever, I want to, you know, whatever, handful of tour events. Well, only s- several of them don't even exist anymore. Yeah. You know, it's kind of sad. A guy goes and wins a PGA Tour event, which is a big deal. It honestly is a great, you know, life lifetime accomplishment for, for most people. Yeah. And... and We've had events that only lasted like three years. Yeah. So this one's lasted a lot longer than that. Yeah. And it'll, it'll be around for many, many, many years to come. So it's that permanence to it. Uh, it's a pretty small group to be in. Mm-hmm. There's not that many living majors, major winners left. Actually, yeah. it's a very small group. In fact, uh, if they gave us the tee today, we'd only take about half the tee sheet today. Mm. You know, I mean, it would literally be yeah. 75, 80 guys. That's it. There's not that many. So that's a very small, uh, you know, group to be in. And, you know, and I'm honored and, and happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Yeah. This, I mean, we're excited to watch. Um, and it's going to be fun to check out Valhalla in 2024 sure. as the host of the PGA. Uh, 1996 winner, Mark Brooks, thank you for joining uh, for this episode. This was fantastic. Thank um, you. Golfers, make sure you're subscribed and uh, check out more of the content we have with Mark Brooks on the YouTube channel. Mark, um, I guess have fun at Valhalla this year. I'll do it. We'll be there. It'll be coming up. We're only about a month away.